I'd like to go over this uh, worksheet uh, master 2.1b activate prior learning reciprocal functions uh, just before we start however I just want to remind you the two different ways that you might be able to break math some errors that you want to try to avoid now the first one is trying to do the square root of a negative value say you do square root of uh, negative four and the second one is when you try to divide by zero so if you go four divided by zero so have you ever tried to do these on a calculator and found out what you got well let's just take a look for a second here if i whip over to here <clears throat> there's a place called onlinecalculator.com i'm going to try to do the first one so i'll do the square root of oh i think i have to do negative four first negative four uh, there you go negative four square root boom got an error and then we'll try another one here uh, clear we'll try to do the four divided by zero four divided by uh, it's gonna be negative four divided by zero equals ooh we got a negative infinity isn't that interesting four divided by zero equals error okay uh, if I go over to Google here <clears throat> Google's got a built-in calculator I'll use there I like that 4 divided by 0 equals isn't that cool you get an infinity so most of the time you get an error and here you get an infinity which is going to open up an interesting conversation and I think we're going to see why it's an error and possibly you could call it an infinity at the same time uh, so let's go back over here so we're going to say uh, error uh, or sometimes they say infinity oh actually I'll give you the symbol for infinity it's like a sideways eight infinity which is kind of cool uh, let's read the text here for a function y is equal to f of x the reciprocal function is one over that uh, so just as a reminder how reciprocals work if I give you four the reciprocal of that would be one over four right if I gave you say uh, two-thirds the reciprocal of that would be a three halves. So that's what reciprocal is. <clears throat> you switch the numerator and the denominator. If it's just a whole number, you put one over that, or you can sort of think of that as being four over one to begin with, and then it's reciprocal. Um, so it kind of makes sense then if you were to start with zero, then the reciprocal of zero, uh, if you started with zero, then the reciprocal of that would turn into. Uh, 1 divided by 0 right so it's following that same pattern and you can't divide by 0 because you get an error or you get this weird kind of idea of infinity so we call that not breaking math we call that a non permissible value when you're going to graph this reciprocal function so it's a reciprocal function when it's in the form of 1 divided by what could be a function in the denominator uh, there is a vertical asymptote for any value of x for which f of x equals zero you may have seen these words before vertical asymptote the toughest thing is actually pronouncing that word asymptote uh, i'm sure you'll be all right uh, a reciprocal function always has a horizontal asymptote with an equation of y is equal to zero cool so it with if the numerator is one and it's over some function there's nothing else to it one over some function you will always get a horizontal asymptote of y is equal to zero let's take a look at this here's a graph of y is equal to one over x minus two so my original f of x would have been uh, equal to x minus two and then you could say what's the reciprocal of that reciprocal is one over that the non permissible value is true is you find that by saying when is x minus two equal to zero so if you solve that the answer is two so therefore x cannot be equal to 2 or the non permissible value is x equals 2 there will be a vertical asymptote with the equation of x equals 2 so if you take a look at this really poor picture here uh, it's poor for a few reasons first of all the graph of this reciprocal function should have arrows in both ways and the vertical asymptote which is in dashed lines I'm, I'm thinking it's supposed to have an arrow on there too but I'm gonna I'll give you an update on that <clears throat> so at x equals 2 um, you know, and even the y-axis doesn't show up very much. At x equals 2, you should have a vertical line. We usually make it dashed, and that is the asymptote. Uh, what is an asymptote? An asymptote, you can see here, it's uh, a line associated with a curve. In this case, it's actually kind of associated with two curves, where the curve approaches but never hits the asymptote. Okay, so if you were to think about this line as it curves, as it goes clo gets closer and closer to this value, this line goes up towards positive infinity, 
right? It never actually touches the line. And then, blop, once you get on the other side of that line, suddenly this line is descending up from negative infinity. So it's kind of cool that way. Um, let's take a look at our first example here. Uh, you check your understanding. Identify the equations of the vertical asymptotes on the graph of each function. So this, really what they're asking when you get down to it is, when is the denominator equal to zero? So the answer is x is equal to a negative 5. That means that if we were to graph this, it gets complicated, it's that weird curvy thing, but the first thing that we're learning is that we're going to have a vertical asymptote where x is equal to 5. Let's go to my new favorite online calculator at desmos.com, <clears throat> and here I've set things up. So if I make my first function x plus 5, boom, that's what it looks like. It's kind of a thick line because I put it in projector mode. Now, whenever x plus 5 is equal to 0, so that spot right there, that's where we're going to get our vertical asymptote. Okay, so if I put it in this uh, form here, 1 over x plus 5, so it's the exact question we took a look at, at this point, point right here, at x equals 5, there is a vertical asymptote. Unfortunately, the calculator does not add the vertical asymptote for us, so... I've made a little x equals a piece here, and then I, it should be a, a dash line. So I'm going to slide it over until it looks like it's in the right spot. And, and here it is, a is equal to a uh, minus 5, so it's all kind of cute. Uh, and a reminder as well, there will be a horizontal asymptote at y is equal to 0. So we have two lines here. Let me just take this out of projector mode so that it looks a little bit more normal. Uh, you can see the dashed lines look a bit more normal, but maybe perhaps in your screen it looks nicer that way. So the original function is this red one I'm making to disappear, and this is what the reciprocal function looks like. At this point, all we're learning is where to put the asymptotes, and by finding the zeros in the denominator. So let's go back to our question here. Uh, let's take a look at 2a. Identify the equations of the vertical asymptotes of the graph of each function again. So you're really wondering, then when is this denominator, x squared plus 3x, uh, plus 2 equal to 0. So I guess we have to factor that, don't we? So we have x here and x here. What are two numbers that multiply out to positive 2 and add up to plus 3? So I believe 2 plus 1 would work. So when would this give us a value of 0? When this is 0 and, or when that is 0? So the two answers are negative 1 and negative 2. So those are the two non-permissible values. The equations of the vertical asymptotes will be x equals negative 1 and x equals negative 2. So let's see how this plays out on our graph here. x squared plus 3x plus 2. So if I go over here, uh, I'll erase this and I'll say, okay, uh, x, x squared plus 3x plus 2. Uh, there is our original function. Now let's anticipate where will we get, I'm going to zoom in on this a little bit, uh, and I'll make it non-projector mode so it's a little bit more fine. Uh, where does this line cross the uh, x-axis? In other words, what are the x-intercepts? And are they're exactly what we found, negative 1 and negative 2. Uh, I'll get rid of these things because it's kind of cloud what we're looking at. So this, these are the two intercepts. So now when I draw the reciprocal function, we're going to see that we have this well, asymptotic behavior by x equals negative 1 and x is equal to negative 2. So if I was to say get my slider out and say where would I put this, uh, here is the asymptote. It's a different kind of asymptote, isn't it, right? Because it's approaching on the left-hand side, uh, it, it, the, the function, the blue line, approaches positive infinity, and on the other side it approaches from negative infinity coming up, and then you get that neat kind of a parabola look, and I don't have a second slider unfortunately, so I'll just move this one over and then the second one would be over there. So if you were to graph this function, although I'll tell you we're not graphing yet, all we're doing is figuring out where the asymptotes go, you would draw one asymptote here, and you would draw the second asymptote over there you in dashed lines, and of course you would also have the horizontal asymptote at y is equal to zero. So I'd like you to finish those questions if you haven't done them already. Uh, thank you very much.